This is Medal of Honor Warfighter. It was released this past October of 2012 by Electronic Arts and was developed by Danger Close Studios in Los Angeles. There was so much hype surrounding this game as soon as it was announced, even I began to fall into it. I really enjoyed its predecessor, Medal of Honor 2010, and I was actually going to review that game first, but it's practically dead now, so I skipped right onto this one. Warfighter was looking to be EA's big game of the year and maybe even the Call of Duty killer we were all waiting for. But right after its release, the hype dropped dead and very few people ever touched the game again. What the hell happened? We're going to take an in-depth look at Medal of Honor Warfighter's greatest problems and failures that pretty much made it into a $60 paperweight. The Warfighter game box is actually pretty cool. The back advertises the authenticity of the single player campaign as well as the variety of choices at your disposal in the game's multiplayer. I have the limited edition version of the game and it also came with this metal case. Other than looking pretty badass, I really don't see much of a purpose for it. Inside the game box, there are two discs, which is a relative norm for many FPS games nowadays. Also, there's really no instruction manual included, just a bunch of paper advertising other EA games. Speaking of instruction booklets, why don't many new games include them anymore? How could something so convenient and informative become so obsolete? Anyway, there's also a limited edition code in here that you can use to unlock bonus content for free that you would otherwise have to pay for. Alright, let's get to the game. This is Medal of Honor Warfighter's multiplayer main menu, and believe it or not, this is where many of the game's problems begin to strike. It's a pile of ass. But before I continue, I have to give them credit on one thing, the music. It's absolutely awesome. Take a listen. Although the menu sucks, Warfighter's gun customization is fantastic. One problem though, I can barely see my damn gun. Could they have chosen a darker background? With certain weapons you can see just fine, but if you have a dark camouflaged weapon, prepare to squint when putting on a new attachment. Anyway, you can customize any weapon's optics, barrel assembly, muzzle, stock, magazine style, and the paint which is the best part. There are a lot of awesome looking camos that you can choose from, especially if you have the limited edition version of this game. I think the MP7 looks best in black, so that's the camo I use for it. Here, you can also put on any new attachments that you may have unlocked while playing. I wish it was easier to tell when you were unlocking specific attachments though, it seems like it's a guessing game most of the time. Alright, let's actually find a damn server to play in. This is the Find Game submenu. There are four options here. Quick Match, Favorite Servers, Server Browser, and Recent Servers. And each has an unrelated picture to go along with it. Why is the picture for recent servers of a dead body with blood splattered on the wall? Seems kind of cryptic to me, but whatever. So when you open the server browser, this is what you're going to find. There are only three active servers of this game type in the entire world? No, of course not. Here's how it works. The browser shows games that aren't filled up yet and have room for another player. It doesn't show full lobbies at all, but instead a thousand empty lobbies. Wouldn't you rather see some full lobbies that may lose a player any time? Look how far the list of the empty rooms goes on for. If I was a new player, I would probably assume that the game was already dead and only had three full servers worldwide. I'd love to know the genius who came up with that idea. On the plus side of things, the filter is really well done and each server actually displays its ping, which is totally innovative to my knowledge. Okay, so with all the menu stuff out of the way, we're actually playing in a game now. Before we begin reviewing all there is to say, keep in mind that you're seeing top-notch gameplay. If it looks boring to you, just know that it doesn't get any more exciting than this. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is the graphics. Is this really the same engine that ran Battlefield 3? Although BF3 was far from perfect, it ran pretty smoothly, even on console. This game runs like ass! There's no way I'm playing at 30 FPS right now. It looks choppy. Plus, a lot of the textures look weak. The in-game sounds, such as explosions, are fantastic, as usual with any EA published game, but the guns sound pretty lame, to be honest. Although the engine may suck overall, I like the feel of the game. The guns handle well, and each one acts very differently with the variety of attachments available. A few minor complaints in the general game mechanics department, though. First off, the pistols are complete and utter garbage. I can't kill anyone with the damn things. The rate of fire is extremely slow, and I don't even want to know how much damage they deal, with the exception of the G18 of course. 
On the other side of things, the explosives are way too powerful. The hand grenades as well as the V40 mini grenades have quick fuse times and have a massive kill radius. Not to mention you can throw them Hail Mary style across the entire map. Yeah, I'm serious. How about the lighting on the maps? It's awful. Some maps are so dark you have to crank your brightness up to full power, and others are so bright it's comparable to the sun in Battlefield 3. Alright, maybe it's not that bad, but it's a pretty big issue. Lastly, bullets don't penetrate wood and even most tree branches. What's wrong with this picture? Other than these concerns, the gameplay is fairly solid, I guess. So there you have it. Now you know why Medal of Honor Warfighter is collecting dust on countless shelves and is treated like a paperweight. One final point I'd like to mention is the score chains. Just like in Medal of Honor 2010 or in Call of Duty, you can call in point streaks that are acquired by the combination of killing enemies and capturing objectives. If there was one factor that I hoped would be improved in Warfighter over Medal of Honor 2010, it was a score chain system. And did they come through for me? No, of course not. This game is a big, floppy disappointment. Between bad menus, confusing unlocks, an awful server browser, boring score chain awards, bad map lighting, overpowered explosives, underpowered pistols, guns that are too strong, guns that are too weak, weapons and missiles that can't shoot through a damn tree branch, long reload times, sounds cutting in and out, bad graphics, bad textures, choppy frame rates, a broken fire team system, long post game timer, and EA dropping support for this overhyped, over anticipated excuse of a game caused it to ultimately fail. Thanks for stabbing us loyal fans right in our backs, EA. It's really appreciated. Believe it or not, through all of those problems, I can still occasionally find this game enjoyable. It's not easy to see from the outside, but Danger Close did some things right here. They're a very young developer, so hopefully they can learn from this game, move on, and only get better from here. I hope you all enjoyed this evil review. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up because it really helps out both me and Pixel Enemy. And if you want me to do a review on a game that you think deserves a spotlight or a second chance, drop a comment down below and let me know. Last but not least, subscribe to my channel for more game reviews and variety content. There's a link on your screen and in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.